and I have a special special message for the Indonesian you Muslim Indonesian can change the whole world by leaving Islam your country will change will become the most beautiful country literally for the mercy and the love of Christ will be with you and then peace will come Hello everyone and peace of Christ all of you. I hope my voice came in good and clear. Please invite your friends and let us do what we need to do for today. Education is very important and those who have no education, they have nothing. Yesterday, we spoke about a video made by a Muhammadan and he claimed that Jesus was not sent to the old world. And actually, this is not his claim. This is the claim from the Muslims for centuries and centuries. And there is always a question, you know, we need to ask ourselves. What is behind the claim? Why Muslims, they made those claims? You see, many of us, we, like, we, go, we go and we respond to it. But there is more important question from the response itself. Why that claim is made? You see, the Muslims, they believe supposedly that Isa or supposedly Jesus is a prophet. So why they want you to believe that he was sent only to the Jews? What is exactly the problem? When you are an antichrist, what do you try the first thing to do? You cannot say, I am an antichrist, because people will not listen to you for Christ is being loved. So what I will say, I will try to strip Christ from the best feature he can provide to you. Salvation to you, love to you, message to you. And now we make it limited in a small number of population, which is the Jews. And that's mean the Christians, they cannot go and teach and preach the gospel for someone he is not a Jew. You have to be a Jew only for Jesus was sent to the Jews. And here you see the hypocrisy of the Muhammadan, the same as their prophet. Why Muhammad? who don't speak languages, he was sent to whole mankind, while the Messiah who speak languages, and not only that, even their books confirm, and we can go and see the reference, that Jesus, he made his disciples speak languages of all the world, or whatever he sent them to. While Muhammad, he don't even speak his own language, he speak it, yes, but he don't know how to write, how to read. So he isn't qualified even to deliver the message to his own people. The insistent that Jesus was sent only to the Jews is just to kill Jesus again. They want to kill Jesus. So Jesus go out of your life. Even though there is too many verses about Jesus saying that he'd been sent to the world and the Bible says like for God loved the world he sent his only begotten son he loved the whole world even though the Bible speak about there's no difference between a Greek Hebrew free and slave still the Muslims they insist even though the Quran the stupid book of the of Muhammad even call the Bible in jail which is a Greek word which again showing me the stupidity of the author of the Quran so how you Muslims you say that Jesus was sent only to the Jews, yet his book is in a Greek language? Why you say Injil? Hmm? So he is a messenger to the Jews, but yet his book is in Greek? So it's extremely easy actually to defeat all those claims. Who is the father of Jesus in Islam? Any Muslim can tell us? They cannot. This is why they call him son of Mary. Have you ever heard a person his name son of Mary? You see, isn't it the Quran says, call them by the names of their father? Chapter 33, verse number 5. Call them by the names of their fathers. It's an order from Allah. Correct? 
You see here when we speak, we speak with knowledge. When they speak, they speak with anger and hatred. And that's why they speak foolishness. It's not allowed for a Muslim to call somebody by the name of anyone except his father. It's a sin. This is, this is what is justified in, this, in the sight of Allah. And now I'm going to follow this verse. So I want to call Jesus the son of who? A Muslim might say to you, well, Jesus is the same as Adam. Actually, the Quran says that Jesus is the same as Adam, which is proven to me that the one who made the Quran is not only he have a little tiny brain, he's a finito, little, very small mosquito brain. Because Adam and Aka, uh, supposedly Isa, they have nothing to share. And we can prove that very easy. Look at this. He's saying the similarity between Jesus before Allah is the same as of Adam. He created him from dust and then he said to him, be and he was. But if we go right now and search in the Quran, we will find how Allah, he created Adam. Chapter 15, verse number 29. When I fashioned him, I breathed into him. But how what he fashioned first? He made sounding clay and then he molded in a shape. And then when he finished the modeling, he breathed into it. Where is where he said it be? So all of this in the other verses says he said be and it was. So if we go where Allah supposed is saying that Jesus is the same as Adam, that is a stupid because neither Adam neither Jesus was created in the Quran by such a method where he said to him be and he was. If we go to the story of Jesus, we will see that Allah, he sent his spirit and his spirit blow into Mary, breathe into Mary in her private part, which is very filthy. So where is being he was? Did Allah say to Jesus be and he was? No. Did Allah say be to Adam and he was? No. The Quran proved that. So when somebody, he make a statement and this statement does not check out with the rest of the statement, that is a proof to us that the one who made the Quran is a certified idiot and he is not qualified to be a storyteller. Even a storyteller, he have to, you know, to remember what he said yesterday. So going back to the Muslims insisting that Jesus was sent only to the Jews, that even is not consistent with the Quran. Actually, there's a video made by the guy, his name is Norman Khan, and I found it very funny. I made a video about it. He said how amazing the Quran is. Why? He said, as an example, Jesus, he don't call Israel my people. He don't call Israel my people. He called them all children of Israel. Why? Because he don't have a father from Israel. Anyone remember this video? Okay. But look what happened now. If we go in the Quran, we will find. It says the following. <clears throat> in chapter 14, verse number 4. We send not a messenger except to teach the language of his own people. So he have to be from the people. So Jesus was sent to who? Because if he was sent to the Jews, that is a contradiction for this verse. Now look at this verse in the front of us. This verse destroyed Muhammad and his cult. And destroy all the claims of Muslims about who was sent to who. So in this verse, there is two conditions. Who is the one who put the conditions? Allah. Are you going to say Allah is a liar now? If there is really true a two condition Allah is asking for. He's saying, I will never send except. So there is no exception. There is two conditions have, have to happen. Language and his own people. Now those Muslims, they will go and make a thousand video about Jesus was not sent to the world. He sent only to the Jews. 
and they try to misquote verses in the Bible, but we cannot misquote this one here. Look carefully. We send not a messenger except with the language of his own people. So if Muhammad was sent to the Indonesian, and Indonesia, not only one nation, I mean, there's many ethnic group, and I believe there's many languages in Indonesia. Muhammad cannot be a messenger for Indonesian. India have more than 300 languages. Muhammad cannot be a messenger to any of them. How you can beat that? Are you going to say the Quran is lying? This is a verse given to Muhammad saying, Muhammad tell them, we send not a messenger except with the language of his own people. In order, even Allah, he make it more clear, thank you Allah, to make it the message clear for them, makes sense. There is something makes sense in the Quran. That's funny. That's strange actually. Finally, there is something makes sense in the Quran. It's a miracle. So why Allah will not send a prophet or a messenger unless he is speaking the tongue of the people and he is from the people? Simply, you have to be native, speaking clear language, so you can be a messenger for the people in order to make it clear. So in the Quran, Muhammad cannot be a messenger for mankind. Not only that. The Quran make it clear that Muhammad was sent only to Mecca, the village of Mecca, and the villages around it. Chapter 6, verse number 92, chapter 42, verse number 7. Let us see what they say. And this is a book which we send down, bringing blessing and confirming revelation. Confirming revelation from who? Of the Christians. And the liar, they say the, the Bible is corrupted. And by the way, again in Arabic, it doesn't say confirm a revelation, not what came before it. It says what is between his hands. I mean, not a single one of them dare to translate correctly. Actually, we can do it right now in front of you. I mean, what a big deal. Here we go. Let me open Google Translation. This is the verse in Arabic, as you see. A copy. Google, Google Translation. Paste. Musaddikan, who is in his hand. The funny, the English translation is not coming correct. Musaddikan, it should be confirming or believing in what is between his hands. Do you see it? So why the word between his hands in the Muslim translation disappear? Because that will destroy all the fabrication. They say that our Bible is corrupted because the Quran confirm that this is a book between his hand and he confirm it. As simple as that. However, the verse, not only that, saying that he confirmed that the, the Torah and the gospel, he is conf confirming that Allah sent him to warn the people of Mecca and what is around it. Do you see it? So the book, the Quran, was sent for the people of Mecca to warn people of Mecca and little tiny population around it. Who says that? The Quran different verse chapter 42 verse number seven <clears throat> we have sent an inspiration to the look here he even add the word Arabic an Arabic Quran okay why it's an Arabic Quran we showed you that Allah never sent a message or a messenger unless to people who speak the tongue right so Allah confirming that he sent the Quran in Arabic and Allah confirming we never send the messenger unless he speak the tongue of his people. So look what happened now. Those bunch of fool trying to prove to us that Jesus was not sent to the whole world, but what the Quran confirmed that Muhammad cannot be sent to the whole world. Cannot even be sent to the Arab because the verse in the Quran says we send you to warn what is in Mecca and what is around Mecca? That's it. And then this guy, he come to us and he call himself a Christo, Christ what? Uh, Christology expert. Christology. 
I mean, even Zach and I could not do that, man. Brother Sitter, we have a brother. He is very expert, and he is expert in the crystal with me. His name is Ustad Insan Lamakatugudikapadikapadikudi. And he's from the media. Okay. Here we go. We just had confirmation from Zach and Naik yeah, that you have expertise in Christology. You cannot even read your own Quran. But the important part of our topic today, why the Muslims, they want you to believe that Jesus was only sent to the Jews? What is behind that? They want you to forget about Jesus and what Jesus did to you in the cross. They want to demolish the name of Christ. Who is the liar? But he who denied that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist who denied the Father and the Son. So the Christ who is the Savior of the world is denied by Muhammad. He wants him to be Christ only for the Jews. So you forget about him. Only 13 million Jews can get the benefit of the Messiah. And not only that, actually, even those Jews now, they can't get the benefit of that because Muhammad claimed that's it. He erased Christianity. He erased Jesus. Even the Jews now, if they say we want to follow Jesus, is not accepted. You have to follow Muhammad. The plan is so clear. And Muhammad is obsessed with money and sex. And this is why he made many privilege in his book about money and sex. Why the Bible is so clear. You cannot save two masters. And it's so clear who is the master of Muhammad. Otherwise, why Muhammad make a privilege in his book he will get the fifth from every attack. Don't Allah provide to you? No, he need to be sure. The fifth and the best of the booty to him. In Islamic books, they claim that the Prophet, he have 16 privilege. About nine of them is about his penis and money. Literally. How we knew who is following the devil? You are of your father the devil. And the last of your father, you will do. He was a murderer from the beginning. And he abode not the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks, he speaks a lie. He speaks of his own. For he is a liar and the father of it, the father of all lies. Always deceivers, they use some of the truth in order to poison you. A thief, you want to get inside your house, there's two kinds of thief. There's the one who break the window, and there's one who bring a uniform to fool you. He say, I am the cable guy. I am from the electricity company. You open the door for him, and then he get in, and then he will steal your jewels. And this is why Jesus says, be aware of false teachers. Those who come to you in a clothes of a sheep. They will come to you in a clothes of a sheep. And we as a Christians, we have a duty to expose Muhammad. If you think this is a duty of Christian prince, you are mistaken. This is your duty too. The Bible order us not to side with the wicked man which means you cannot be politically correct. And you say to a Muslim, oh, okay, just because you don't want to argue and you don't want to show him that he's, he's wrong. By doing that, you are siding with the wicked man, wicked Muhammad. You shall not spread false report. You shall not join hand with the wicked man. So you will be a false witness. Many in this world today, they are false witnesses. They claim to be priests. They say to you that Muhammad, he worshiped the same God. They say to you that Muhammad is Abrahamic. They say to you that Muhammad is from Ishmael, which is absolutely big, stupid, either a lie or a mistake. Depend who is saying it. Because some people, they say it because they are ignorant, and that will make it a mistake of ignorance. And there's people who say it, and they knew it's a lie, which will make it a lie. Everything we showed you proving that Muhammad is nothing but a wicked man. Never 
side with the wicked man Muhammad. And how in the world I am going to leave Jesus the Christ, the Holy? Uh, guys, we are debating with Muslims about Jesus being God. <laughs> do, do you notice? Muslims, they cannot say Jesus was a bad person, he is a sinner, because even the Hadith confirm that Jesus is the only one I can show you right now if there is a Muslim who want to challenge me. How the Hadith explain that every prophet is a sinner, including Muhammad, even the Quran confirmed that, except Jesus. But why Muhammad he did say that, that Jesus was not a sinner, because he want to earn your trust. He is the wicked man. Be aware of false teachers. Even be aware of false teacher will come to you from between you, not even from different nation or different even belief. They claim to be Christians, but they are not. There is no question that Muhammad is a wicked man. So I hope we learn something very clear today, that when the Muslim, they want you to believe that Jesus was not sent for all. The purpose is so simple. They want to kill Jesus the Christ in your heart. They want to make you believe, don't wait for Jesus. He cannot help you. Jesus is no one. That's it. He's gone. Jesus does not exist anymore for them. Even though there is many contradictions in their own text where Muhammad he said that Jesus will come back in the judgment day and he will rule the earth. How we say Jesus is not for all people, but Jesus is going to be the ruler for mankind and he will be the just ruler for all of us. If he was sent only for the Jews, he should come back to the Jews. And why Jesus only the one who is coming back? Muhammad the liar, he used that fact about Jesus in order to deceive you more. So in one hand, he agreed that Jesus is coming back. He agreed that he is going to judge the whole mankind. But the only thing he wants from you is to leave Jesus for now, as long as you're alive, and believe in him, Muhammad. So you die and you go to hell. This is the plan of the devil. For after death, there is no repent. He don't want you to believe in Jesus now. And Jesus said clearly, not everyone says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of my father, but the one who do his will. So you don't follow Jesus. You don't repent. You don't belong to Jesus. And now it's the time to belong to Jesus, not after you die. After you die, that's it. It's a judgment day. When Muhammad, he made it clear that one of his names is Al-Mahi. The one who erase. He erase what? He erase a Christianity. Read carefully. He said, I have five names. I am Muhammad and Ahmed and Al-Mahi, through whom Allah eliminate infidelity. And Muhammad, he made it clear. That Christianity is against Allah it is infidelity he will erase it so anyway guys I want to say thank you for being here may the Lord bless you I hope we did learn something good I hope we had covered the issue and remember always that the purpose of this is just to kill Jesus Islam is an Antichrist cult Islam do anything they can in their hand to make you forget about Jesus. Jesus does not exist in your life no more. There is only one person. His name is Muhammad. That is the whole purpose. Jesus cannot be used no more. Forget about him. He's just in the book for history. This is what they want from you. He is just someone we talk about, but we don't follow. He's just someone has a name in our book, but even the name is not correct. He's nobody. This is what Muhammad is trying to say to you. Jesus is nobody. For Muhammad is an antichrist. Be careful, my friend. The devil, he will do everything he can in order to fool you.
Don't be foolish. If a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you? The Bible is the book of wisdom. The Messiah did not leave us alone. He is with us. Every two of you mention my name, I will be between them. And now, right now, he is listening. And he said to us, you shall know them by their fruits. Muhammad, he called himself Muhammad, which means the praised one. Look at this filthy, he, he claimed to be God. The praised one. I thought the praised one is God. And yet he claimed that he worship his God and worship his God alone. But yet he called himself Muhammad. This is one of the names of God. He changed his name from Qatham to Muhammad. However, the names will not make any, any different for us. What if he called himself Jesus? Still he is a fraud. What if he called himself Moses? Still he is a fraud. It's not your name. It's your fruit. And all of you are welcome to examine the filthy fruit of this filthy man. Criminal, thief, rapist, liar. A man who approved lying to the wife, beating the wife, cheating in the wife, and he himself, he practiced all those things. No ethic, no dignity. My friend, the wisdom of the Messiah, your Lord, is in front of you. This is not a golden statement. This is beyond all the gold. This is beyond all the jewels. You shall know them by their fruits. By their fruit. Remember always this. If you want to get married from a woman or from a man, remember to examine the fruit. You shall know them from their fruits. If you want to have a business with somebody before you do business, you shall know them by their fruits. If you want to take a friend, before you take them as a friend, you shall know them by their fruits. This is a message that will save you from a lot of pain in your life. This is a recipe from the healing God, our Lord the Messiah. Don't be fooled by the look. Don't be fooled by the names. Don't be fooled by attitude. Don't let them fool you by their act. If I'm wearing a clothes of a priest, does not mean I am a man of God. The Bible says to you, be aware of false teachers who come to you in the clothes of a sheep. So the priest can be a wolf, but not every priest is a wolf. So don't judge by clothing, don't judge by uniform, don't judge by name. If somebody called himself a Christian does not make him a Christian. And this is exactly what happened with Muhammad. He called himself the praised one. Can we praise him for anything? This devilish man. We will praise him for what? For raping children? For splitting a woman alive and she is over the age of 80 by tying her legs into two camels? And yet the Muslim, they say he was sent as a mercy for mankind. A man who enjoyed torture. Who put nails in the eyes of his enemies. My friend, I have no wisdom of me to share with you. But I have a sentence in front of you, just one, better than all the books in the world. One sentence can bring a lot of right decisions in your life, including choosing who you worship. In order I want to follow a person, whoever that person is, Buddha, Hindu God, Muhammad, Christ, let us examine the fruits. As simple as that. Which means the Messiah, he gave us a rule even to examine him himself. Which one you should follow, Muslims? 
a criminal a man who you Muslim claim that he was bewitched controlled by the devil a man who himself admit that the shaitan he command him but to do good a man who admitted that shaitan he gave him satanic verses a man who taught you to beat your wife to divorce women as if they are sex toys change them every day if you want just pay them their wages that is the ethic which the God of Moses taught the God of Abraham taught the God of Jacob taught that is the God you are looking for a God who promised you endless penis a penis will never go limp women they have their ass one mile that is God for you so Muslims listen carefully if this is God for you you chosen the devil because I challenge you to show me one of the things I just quote about your God is not what the devil he tried to tempt us with. This is not the promise of God. This is a temptation of the devil. And I have a special, special message for the Indonesian. You Muslim Indonesian can change the whole world by leaving Islam. Your country will change will became the most beautiful country literally for the mercy and the love of Christ will be with you and then peace will come look at your country look at what those Islamists they do in your country look at the mosque how people go inside the mosque and they are peaceful they get out they are angry they want to burn cars shout scream anger Satan the devil you go in peace, you leave with war. Takbir Allahu Akbar, you want to kill everybody. In two seconds. From their fruits, you shall know them, my friend. Not from their speeches, unless the speech present the fruits. Not from their words, unless their words is their fruit. Their action present them. So always be aware of the liars and the liars, their best is to deceive you. Always he deceive you, he target you. The liar, he will not target the, the bad ones, they will target the good ones. They will target always the good ones. The bad one is already is bad, I mean, who care? So I want to say thank you for being here. May the Lord bless us all. Keep us wise, smart, vigilant. So nobody can deceive us and nobody can lie to us. And nobody can fool us. And again, I repeat, if a fool like Muhammad can fool you, how fool are you, my friend? Remember this statement. How a person like Muhammad can fool you. That's disgusting. Thank you. God bless you and see you soon again. Christ is Lord. Islam is false and we prove it every day. Bye-bye.